folks, Bryony Thomas here from Watertight Marketing for my fourth of um, five videos this week. Thinking through marketing in survival mode, what are the things that during this um, really difficult time you could be doing in your business to not only kind of survive this period but come out at the other end as a thriving business? I think those words are, are being are coming around and around and around, aren't they? Survive and thrive. Um, so on Monday, I talked about um, the the pressure at the moment to appear productive and jump into action. If you're not feeling that and you need to breathe and reflect, then that's absolutely fine. Take some time to return to your values, your vision. Think about what you want your business to be on the other side of this, as well as looking immediately to what you can do now. On Tuesday, I talked about turning your marketing upside down. Now, this is a core principle within watertight marketing, um, and that is that you start at the bottom with your existing customers, move up to your prospects, and then to people who've never heard of you. And often, particularly in times of crisis, people go straight out to the big wide world, shouting to people who've never heard of them before. And so now, more than ever, turn your marketing upside down, focus customers first, and then move on up. Yesterday I looked at those customers and what you can be doing for customers at the moment with some basic kind of admin things to be getting on with as well as thinking about your commercial karma, that is the legacy you leave of how you treat people during this crisis. Today I want to go further up, so we're going from buckets into funnels and filters. Now let me just orient you um, in what we're talking about. Um, all of the concepts that I'm talking about are from um, the Watertight Marketing book which um, is out on Tuesday, funnily enough, um, coming out on the 31st of March, which is also my birthday. So if you want to go deeper on anything that I'm talking about today, it's all in there. The core concept is that we deconstruct a typical sales funnel, and you'll see the numbered items there. They're all areas within a sales process where people step out of the process. We call them your touch point leaks, points of interaction where you lose somebody from their buying decision with you. Now we redraw that model as a bucket, funnels and filters, and then tap. So yesterday I talked about making your bucket watertight. Today I'm talking about funnels and filters, so converting the conversations you're having into customers and filtering out people who may be not right for your business. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about taps, generating awareness and interest for your business. So what I would like to look at today as the touch point leaks in those funnels and filters. So here we are, we're at evaluation and trial. Now you may well have had a sales pipeline um, in place. It may have been that you were in conversation with people, they were evaluating your products and services, maybe trying you out for the first time. Now the marketing things that come together here to really help you convert conversations into customers are number four, which is no gateway, so putting together a product ladder that people can buy from. Five, critical approval, which is getting people of influence and veto to say yes to buying from you, and proof which is evidencing your claims. So in terms of marketing in survival mode, I want to talk to you today particularly about leak number five, no critical approval, so those voices of veto and third parties. Now I would be thinking about this in two ways, which is what could you be doing now within this time of crisis and what could you be doing to prepare yourself longer term for the business that you want on the other side? So I said um, to think about the business that you want on the other side of this. So there are kind of two tracks to what um, I would be doing in your business at the moment. There's the now and then there's the when we come through this and the economy picks up. So let's have a look at um, the leaks, the, the leak five, no critical approval. So what we do in the Watertight Marketing Methodology is we have three themes for each of the touchpoint leaks. Now no critical approval is about third parties who have the ear of your buyers. And we break this into three areas, which is content, what is the content you need to convince third parties, direct, which is putting that content in front of them directly, and indirectly, which is putting that content um, in front of them via a third party. Now content, let's talk about content to get people on side with you. Now there are things that you can do um, now and gosh aren't we awash with content about coronavirus. 
Take some time to think about what content you could create that would be useful. Have a think about checklists and templates. Um, I've seen accountants doing cash flow forecasts and that sort of thing. But don't shoehorn it. Make it relevant to what you do in your business because you want to be making sure that people are associating you with what you really do so that the, on the other side of this they have you mentally filed correctly for what you do. So yes, absolutely, have a think about content that will help people come through um, this process if there are things that you can do. And then I would say take the time over the coming months to have a think about some really compelling content that will get the right kind of work um, coming your way on the other side of this. So I would take time to create the sort of thing that you might never get time for. Have a think about creating a diagnostic process, a calculator, some sort of tool or process that gets people to diagnose or assess whether they would be right for you. Now we have our Touchpoint traffic line for this um, and if any of you have done Daniel Priestley's 24 assets that would be a great thing to be doing for your business right now and it would also give you an example of the sort of tool I'm talking about. So if you have time I would be focusing that time on creating a really compelling piece of content that helps people to evaluate themselves against your products and services. So take time to create a calculator or a tool for the sorts of people that you want to come into your business on the other side of this. Now the other thing that I would be doing as well as, of course, um, don't assume that no one's buying anything. People are buying things, and it may well be that you have customers who are still going to buy from you. So, you know, do that assessment, work out whether people are going to be stopping buying or continuing to buy. Now, the main thing that I would be focusing on at the moment, as well as your um, kind of those people you're in conversation with, is potential referrers. Now, if you're going to be going quiet with your own customers for whatever reason, they can't buy from you at the moment for the reasons we all know and understand then take some time to really work with your referral um, audience. So those are people in complementary but non-competitive businesses. Take some time to write a list of who they are. Who has the ear of your ideal client? Um, who has their uh, attention at the moment? Who has something that is really um, valuable to them at the moment? And how could you work with those referrers? Take some time to write a list of your potential referring partners. So all complementary but non-competitive businesses. So for me, that might be someone like coaches, it might be accountants, it might be lawyers, it might be HR providers. What could you do for them that would be helpful for them at the moment? Let's say you're a graphic designer and you have um, an HR consultant who you would love to um, kind of have a, a good ongoing referral relationship with in the future. Could you work with them at the moment to put together a guide to putting an employee on furlough in a nicely designed way? Maybe you would do that for them currently at a discounted price with a if they buy from you a voucher to, to um, book from you in your future or they make a commitment to book a job with you in the future when we come out of the other side of this. So have a think about complementary but non-competitive um, businesses that you could work with. Could you be putting on webinars with those people? Could you put together a panel of experts who would provide expert input for the um, your existing customers in the areas that are of real interest for them at the moment, where you're interviewing. Now, take care not to um, dilute your own message. So you do need to make sure that that's put in context of what you do actually do, um, but that you're providing something of value um, for your uh, existing and potential customers. So let me recap on what I'm saying. The first is, don't assume that people aren't going to buy at the moment. Take some time to really consider whether people will be continuing to buy your products and services. Have conversations with the people that you were in conversation with. Talk to them realistically about whether or not there's um, you know, a chance of things uh, proceeding. Maybe you would change the way you would deliver that. Maybe you would change your payment terms. Um, but don't assume that they're not going to buy. Then take some time to consider your content. 
consider content for now and consider content mm. for the other side mm. of this process. So the content for now, templates, checklists, etc., that people would find useful for the future, something that would really um, of, of value. And then take some time to connect with your referrers. And throughout this whole process, I would be taking the time to connect with people on LinkedIn. It may be that they land in different roles on the other side of this crisis, but if you've connected with them on LinkedIn, you can stay in touch. I hope that's useful. Things to be doing with your pipeline. Lots of love from me. See you tomorrow.